Hurricanes, floods, the Great Depression, and South Florida remained undaunted. Following the ruin of a devastating hurricane in 1926 and the stock market crash of 29, Miami in the early 30s barely held on as a remote fishing village, a windswept town that was unknown to most, basically a vacation destination for big game fishermen, population barely 110,000. But despite its small size and considerable isolation, Miami's ambitious and some believed idealistic city fathers led by Keith Phillips, who became the first president of the Orange Bowl Committee and flanked by the mad genius himself, Ernie Seiler. Together, they worked hard to develop winter attractions and to spark national interest and tourism for what was then an unlikely place, the Glades of South Florida. It was interesting to me in studying the Orange Bowl history or reviewing it, uh, you had the land boom collapsing in the 20s, and then you had the hurricane in 1926, stock market crash in 29, but the people who were the leaders, the movers and shakers in uh, Miami, and it wasn't a big place then, probably about 100,000. They persevered. That didn't deter them any uh, through the Depression years, and I think that's a unique thing about the early development of the Orange Bowl, counting the Palm Festivals, it's the oldest bowl after the Rose Bowl. It just shows you what leadership and faith can do. Not least of these daring ideas was to stage a postseason football game. Yet sure enough, by 1933, the University of Miami's Hurricanes were facing Manhattan College in the first ever Palm Festival held at Moore Park. It was football in the tropics, or so it was billed, and the event would serve as the humble predecessor of the present-day Orange Bowl. An amazing accomplishment when one considers that the Hurricane team was so cash poor, 14 pairs of shoes were shared by 32 players. Manhattan came by boat, by the way. They always claimed that they got seasick, and that's why they lost the University of Miami 7 and up. The first actual Orange Bowl Classic would be held two years later, in 1935, Miami versus Bucknell. After taking a few days to deliberate the invitation, Bison head coach Hook Milan brought 280 gallons of Pennsylvania's own water supply to combat the heat. Bucknell held Miami to just four downs and 28 yards as they claimed the inaugural classic 26 to nothing. And Bucknell back Bill Wilkinson scored the first Orange Bowl touchdown. The parade, for example, and elaborate halftime shows quickly became fan favorites as year after year, the Orange Bowl Festival grew in size and scope. Now, conventional wisdom back in the day would have said that convincing schools to travel thousands of miles in the dead of winter to a virtually unknown city in South Florida and to play for a crowd of strangers, it would never work. But the mad genius was anything but conventional. He went out to Oklahoma, and uh, in the middle of the night when it was snowing, he uh, painted on the sidewalk, let's go to Miami. Next day they met, and uh, the Cotton Bowl and the Sugar Bowl were offering about $25,000 more than the Orange Bowl. But then my dad pulls out a bunch of pictures about the beach, the sand, pretty girls. So they voted unanimously to come to Miami. That 1939 game was a high demand ticket, and the underdogs, Tennessee, who had been invited on the suggestion of Oklahoma University, the opposing team, ended up beating Oklahoma 17 to nothing. I guess to any team uh, going to the Orange Bowl, there were only four bowl games then, I believe, and Orange Bowl was the, the one that we wanted, needed to go to. You know, it was great, especially here in South Florida. The Orange Bowl has been a part of my life, and it's a good reason that I live in Florida today. It's an old event. It's been here for a long, long time, but it's not old in the feeling. It always feels new, and I think that's the secret of the Orange Bowl. You've got to give credit to the people who founded Orange Bowl, going back into the 30s, and the fact that here we are 75 years later, uh, a very relevant organization that, that gives tremendously back to the community.
at Metro. Light up the holidays with the best deal in wireless. Switch and get your choice of two free phones from top brands. Plus, unwrap a brand new tablet with all the features you crave on us. Get unlimited data on all your devices with a full Amazon Prime membership included. Yeah. Metro gives you access to the hottest shows, shopping, free one-day delivery, and more. Get the best deal in wireless this holiday season, only at Metro. Lock it, find it, start it from anywhere with Remote Connect. Toyota, let's go places. As a single mother, my first job is care about Derek. Everything that I do is from him. When I move this apartment, after six months, we need to connect with the world. I use the internet to keep him in a language because that's the way to get connected with my family tradition. He has to know where he come from. We need internet essential. It's no excuses to not get connected. 